Over the past couple of months, my art has seen some pretty insane improvement from works like these to this and this and these. And that is undoubtedly because I stole. I stole I stole people's art styles. I I admit it. You might say, isn't stealing bad? Well, society tells us it's bad. But society also says that pineapple on pizza is a criminal offense, so society can kick some rocks, you know what I'm saying? The only stealing someone can do is claim that their art is 100% original. We've all been inspired by other artists before, and that inspiration seeps into every artwork you create in the future, whether consciously or subconsciously. But inspiration is just an emotion. Every time I see a Shea painting, I'm inspired to draw the next Mona Lisa, but usually as soon as I start drawing, that Mona Lisa turns into the ugliest goblin imaginable. The real learning comes from copying others, and seeing how I've done just a couple of those, I'll show you how to copy the right way. Speaking of learning, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, but we'll get to that later. So some of you still might not be convinced. What about fundamentals? What about finding your own art style? How does this affect LeBron's legacy? Listen up, Buster. When you're studying another artist's work, you're basically downloading their techniques that they've spent maybe a few couple hundred years developing. And while you now master those techniques, you just fast forward part the whole 100 year art development arc. Like dog, that's the definition of a dub. And the style thing is just kind of ridiculous. Sure, you could be temporarily swayed into drawing a certain way because of who you studied, but over time, when you start to set off on your own full original paintings, this style will change along with you and how you grow as an artist. You are the only unique individual that exists in your world. Remember that. The only way you end up fully copying somebody else's styles is if you forever study that artist's work until you perish or they perish. It's last man standing at that point, and I myself respect that, personally. Otherwise, you're good. The first step in copying is obviously finding an artist to study. Now, there are actually more things to consider than just to find the artist you like the most, especially if you feel like your skill level isn't super up there yet. Finding an artist who posts their painting process, who gives insights and tips into their work, should be at the top of your artist to study list. Learning from somebody else's work can be very difficult sometimes because you can like see the final product, but you can't really grasp the reasons why the artist made the decisions that they made. That's why having insight into their thoughts through time lapse and process breakdowns is a huge contributor to how successful your study will be. Unfortunately, that's not always available, so the next best thing to find it is an artist who has a large discography of their work. The more sample size you have, the easier it will be to spot similarities and patterns that reoccur in the artist's work. Another great thing about a large catalog is that you can scroll back, years even, and peel back layer by layer to see how that artist got to where they currently are. For example, on my Sam Does Art study video, I was able to go back to 2020 and look at some of Sam's earliest stylistic pieces. I looked at the foundation of the Disney style expressions he based his style on and was able to make a timeline of how the facial features evolved into his now pretty iconic style. One last thing to consider is that I found studying a variety of artists with varying styles and not just studying a certain particular style is a pretty good rock to follow. So I made videos on studying works of Redom, Wallop, and Sam Does Arts and as you can see their styles are all quite different to one another. This ensures that I gain the maximum amount of knowledge because with different style comes all sorts of different ways to render, different techniques, and different ways to problem solve. Instead of learning a similar way to draw something, now I've learned three different ways to solve the same thing. And I can choose, even mix and match the different styles into my own painting. You're basically out there collecting the art infinity stones. Okay, alright, great. You've chosen the artist you want to study. Now, the decision to make is whether you want to trace their artwork directly or create a similarly themed but technically original artwork. Tracing and doing a direct study of another artist's work is self-explanatory, but a good example of how to do the second option is a Redham study I did. Obviously, I still copied the techniques Redham uses, but instead of directly copying a single painting of Redham's, you can see that I sort of took many different elements of Redham's paintings and mushed them together. The redhead girl, the dress she's wearing, the flower from these two paintings, and a nice big cloud, all ripped from different Redham paintings. This second option is obviously harder, but I think the ROI, return on improvement, is just way higher. You apply the artist's techniques that you've learned, but you don't completely shut off your brain, and you still have to do a little bit of work and problem solving for yourself. Balanced, as all things should be. Don't get me wrong, directly studying a piece of artwork one for one is completely fine. You still get a majority of the learning. It's just that you can't really learn how to apply those techniques in different scenarios, well, because <laughs> the scenario has already been made for you. 
What usually ends up happening when you study by tracing, you'll end up with like a super polished and cool rendering techniques, but have a base that's like pretty off. Especially if you're a newbie and your fundamentals aren't that great. A shiny turd, basically. But don't get me wrong, it's still an incredibly effective way to study, especially for learning cool techniques and effects. A word of caution, however, is you should keep these types of studies offline. There are no rules to art and tracing is a great tool to use. But posting traced work of another artist, even if it's a study, is usually a no-go. If you're breaking down some techniques like in a video tutorial, that's perfectly fine. But otherwise, you should probably keep it offline. Okay, now to actually the breakdown part. It could get overwhelming because there's so many different elements that define somebody's style. You have color, lighting, shapes, lines, texture, effects, personality. You might even try and study more theoretical elements like studying the artist's layering system or their painting process itself. But I think the best way to approach the study is to just focus on three of those elements. You want to find three that really speak to you and that you want to study. For example, in my Samsung's art study, the main three things I looked at were shapes, lighting, and lines. For Wallop, I mainly studied his rendering, color, and effects, and for Redum, I studied their lines, effects, and lighting. You see what I mean? Let's take a look at Shea's work. If I were to study Shea right now, I would definitely focus on lighting, composition, and color because those are the things that stand out to me. And make sure you take your time to break down and fully understand how that artist achieves the look you're going for. That could be with writing notes or just comparing many different pieces of work. If you just try and wing it onto the final painting, it'll probably end up looking schmelly. So make sure you have enough background knowledge and some good research before you dive in. You can even do a smaller study and just focus on a single element of the artist's work, a little feet warmer before diving into the deep end. Once you start, there isn't much help I can give other than some kind words of encouragement. Don't get frustrated if you can't apply the techniques the way you want. Just the process of copying will help your learning a ton by itself. Just make sure you don't end up slacking too hard and end up painting how you would paint regularly. Remember, you're here to copy and learn. If you ever get stuck, don't be afraid to head back to the lab and try smaller mini breakdowns of the artist's style. And finally, <laughs> I know this might be a little self-interest, but you should also take some time to watch how other people break down art. It's like what a coach does in sports. So, so I played volleyball, and I would watch college players way better than me, and I'm thinking, yo, I should be able to do the same thing. All I need to do is hit harder. <laughs> but when I go to hit harder, I'm spiking the net, I'm hitting it way out, <laughs> I'm not getting the results I want. Which is why having a coach helping you who has experience in the sport will help you see something that you might have never even considered doing. <laughs> All that to say, if you're stuck, go watch somebody better than you. <laughs> and uh, hopefully you get some new inspiration. Another great way to get some new inspiration and explore creative topics is to learn through Skillshare, who sponsored this section of the video. Skillshare is an online learning community with loads of videos spanning a wide range of topics, from digital illustration on Procreate, to video editing, to business, to even productivity and self-help topics. With the wide range of learning opportunities, it's a great place to learn new skills and design a skill set built specifically for you. I'm my own boss when it comes to running my YouTube channel, and this productivity class by Ali Abdal, Productivity for Creators, Systems, Organization, and Workflow, has really given me some valuable new skills to maximize how I produce my content. As someone who's never gone to a post-secondary institution, this class really helped me learn how to organize and find a workflow that best fits my needs. Skillshare is a great place to invest in learning if you're an artist, and the first 1,000 people to use my link in the description will get one month free trial of Skillshare, so you got a pretty good shot of trying Skillshare for yourself. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this part of the video. Finally, I just want to talk about how copying slash studying other artists turned out for me. Like I said before, my art went from this to this in a couple of months, and I posted like three main studies during that time. From STAM study, I learned a lot about foundation and base painting. I remember I had an epiphany during my study and realized that Sam always got like 70% of his painting done in like the first third of his painting time. I used to put on a bunch of hoopla and tell myself I'd be able to fix it later on. And uh, while sometimes I could, most of the time I have made a severe and continuous lapse in my true drawing capabilities. After that study, I was able to become a lot more efficient and feel a lot more confident early on in my paintings, giving me a boost of morale, making sure my <laughs> didn't go halfway through the painting. From Wallop, I really learned an incredible amount in rendering and how to draw faces. 
Wallop just draws incredibly beautiful smooth faces like the ones you see on Roman statues, which is what I wanted to replicate. And don't get me wrong, the Wallop study didn't just help with faces. While I think Sam helped me with like the first 70% of rendering, Wallop helped with that final 30% to give me a nice polished look in my recent paintings. And from Redum, I learned just a ton of cool techniques using strokes and color effects, curves and stuff like that. Although I don't think I've fully implemented some of those techniques I learned from Redum yet, I just think having them in the back of the noggin, another tool in the tool belt never hurt nobody. I've also noticed that I'm starting to be able to just focus on adding my own personal elements into my paintings. Before, I would basically spend the entire painting process just trying to make that thing look good and not horribly warped. But now, I can actually spend some time thinking about how I can add extra texture or how far I want to push the lighting and things like that. And being able to do that personally leads me to think that I'm starting to develop into my own style. Sure, you can probably see more Sam inspiration than the other two, but I think that because of the other two, my art has been able to evolve into its own unique style just naturally. And hopefully that gives you the confidence to continue to start with other artists without worrying that you'll become a knockoff of them. You know what though, like, no, stop giving a darn. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Art is fun. Learning art is fun. And draw because you want to, whatever that reason may be. And people who try and tear you down for drawing too much like somebody else, whatever that means, are just a bunch of gatekeepers who don't want you to improve. And nobody likes gatekeepers. Unless you're like actually a gatekeeper for like a job, like organizing in an office or like in a train service. Yeah, no, no hate to them though. They cool. Alrighty, time to put this video to use. Go, go now and uh, copy your favorite artist style. I dare you. Or if you're feeling like you need some more motivation, go ahead and watch this video here. Alrighty, time to give me your forehead.